Hi, this is Ron Risman at CameraTown.com and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to use Pluralize with Adobe Premiere Pro CS5. Um, Pluralize came out about a year and a half ago and it was originally um, released for Final Cut Pro and then they released it for Sony Vegas Pro 9 and then for Adobe Premiere Pro CS5 and then an Avid Media Composer. And we're going to be taking a look at today uh, how to use Pluralize in Adobe Premiere Pro I'll be talking about some of the things, some of the do's and don'ts that you want to do with Pluralize using the Premiere Pro uh, interface. Unlike uh, Sony Vegas Pro, which I reviewed last year with Pluralize, Pluralize doesn't integrate exactly within Premiere Pro. Premiere Pro does not allow scripting within the, within the application. So you're going to export your video files through an XML. So you're going to take your sequence that you've laid out, you're going to export it as a Final Cut Pro XML file, and then once it's exported, you're going to import it into a separate running application, which Pluralize is on the Windows platform. You're going to do all your syncing, and then you just import that new, newly synced sequence back in. So I'm going to show you how this all works. And um, I'm going to be doing an edit of a the two-camera edit, and there's uh, only two soundtracks. I don't have a separate audio track this time. So we've got the audio from the camcorder, which was recorded through a lav mic on the uh, Comedian. What this is, this is my brother's 50th birthday party, and we had a comedian come that played some music and told some jokes, and I wired him up with a lapel microphone, and then I had a separate Canon 7D or 5D Mark II that I was running and gunning with and getting some B-roll, and I, I had an on-camera microphone with that, although we're not going to really be using that other than for syncing purposes. So I, I've imported my clips into Premiere Pro using the project panel over here, and if you don't know how to import your clips into Premiere Pro, um, you basically you right-click anywhere in the project panel, you select Import, and then you uh, go to your folder where your meteor is. I've already imported it, and since I'm using both a camcorder and a DSLR, I've got two different types of footage, so I've put them into two separate folders. I've taken the camcorder footage that records MTS files, which are AVCHD files, and I've placed them into the AVCHD folder. I've taken my Canon 7D or 5D Mark II files, which are MOV, QuickTime files, and I've put them into a folder called MOV. It helps me separate them because when you want to sync up with Pluralize, you want each camera to be on their own track in the sequence. So I'm going to open up the AVCHD file. I'm going to take the four clips that I have, and I'm going to drag them onto my sequence, and I'm going to put them on a track that I've already renamed AVCHD. When you first drag them onto the timeline, these will actually be called Video 1, Video 2, Video 3. You can go through and right click and select Rename and type in, in this case, AVCHD. And I did the same thing here with this track as I right clicked on it, I select Rename, and I typed in DSLR. Uh, it just allows me personally to know which track is which. So I've got my AVCHD audio tracks already slid onto the timeline. Now I'm going to open up my MOV folder, which is my, um, my digital SLR video files. And what I find easiest when you when you have a lot of files, in this case I have close to a hundred clips that we're going to sync up here, you want to preferably put them in chronological order. So the best way to do that is to make sure that in under the name column, right at right at the top of the column, you click and you you put them into numeric order. So I've got them one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way through, and uh, all the way up to. Um, 95, 96, 97, and then we actually have four separate clips from a different camcorder. This was from the 7D, actually not a camcorder, a digital SLR. These four clips here are from the Canon 7D. The other clips are from, Canon, from the Canon 5D Mark II. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to basically highlight these. Now here's another uh, tip. When you're highlighting your clips in Premiere Pro, start with the first clip, because uh, Premiere Pro will tend to take whichever clip you selected first and make that your first clip so they'll be out of chronological order which will just mean that Pluralize has to work harder. So I'm going to click on clip number one. I'm going to scroll down to clip number, in this case, 9999. I'm going to hold down the shift key on my keyboard and then I'm going to click once and select and that'll then highlight all the clips from one through 9999 and everything in between. Now I can click one more time and drag and drag these onto the timeline. So now I've got my DSLR footage. You can see all the different, you know, when you're shooting with a DSLR, you tend to start stop a lot just because you're running and gunning with it and you obviously have a 12 minute limit. 
with the um, the ABC HD camcorder in this case I let it run that was my A roll I put it on a tripod it's a one cam one person shoot two camera shoot so I wanted to use that unmanned while I went and I you know got some B roll with the um, with the DSLRs so as you can see I have four clips for ABC HD but I have close to you know 90 to 100 clips of um, video footage now that we've got this on the timeline you don't want to add any effects you don't want to add any transitions until you export this and then re-import it and sync it up so the first step is once you dragged it onto the timeline is to sync up your footage so to do this I'm gonna come up here to the file menu I'm gonna come down to export and I'm gonna select Final Cut Pro XML and this will export this timeline or this sequence as an XML file you'll get a little uh, requester box that pops up saying that you this operation requires that your project be saved so I'm gonna hit OK or yes this brings up a um, a requester box allowing me to name the exported XML file so I'm gonna name this um, video review one and I'm gonna hit save and it's now exported you don't see anything happening but it exported the XML file which is basically a text file explaining the length of these clips the, where the audio clips are where the video clips are and now we're going to minimize this application I'm going to open up single softwares pluralize in this case I'm using the newest version 1.215 I'm going to click on open and now I'm going to select the exported XML file which is the video review one so I click on that I select open and this will give me now a choice of sequences if I have more than one. Now in this case I only have one sequence so sequence one shows up here but if I had sequence one, sequence two, sequence three I could go through through the drop down box and select which sequence I wanted to sync up. Now since my clips are in chronological order at least most of them I think the last four clips from the Canon 7D are not in chronological order but in this case I'm going to select clip, clips are in chronological order because most of my clips are with the exception of four and um, I'm gonna leave level audio off now what I've done here in these options by telling pluralize that the clips in chronological order it allows it to more accurately sync up the clips because it doesn't have to worry about whether the fifth clip in actually belongs in the first position even though the sound may not have matched exactly this basically says you can go in order um, clip number two will not come before clip number one so it makes it a little bit faster and a little bit easier for it to sync up if you have really difficult um, sync problems you can use clip markers where you actually put markers uh, at similar points in the different clips it, it can be close it doesn't have to be exact but by telling it to use clip markers it'll look for those markers and then uh, use that as an aid to help it sync you can tell it to replace the audio uh, in which case it'll come up with one audio track and replace the audio um, using the main track you can use level audio in which case it actually will take the different audio um, sequences from each camera and it'll make them match a little bit better uh, in this case I don't really care about that because I'm going to be using the the wireless audio track I'm not going to use any of the audio from the from the uh, DSLR footage and if you sync this up the first time and it didn't really do well you could use the try really hard option I find that when you have a lot of clips in this case about a hundred clips the try really hard option adds a lot of time to your render uh, when it comes to trying for, for it to try to sync and um, so I usually use that as a as a second option I, I go through the first time let it sync up if for some reason it's all over the map and it doesn't really sync up well I'll go to the try really hard option and that usually does the job so in this case the only thing we're going to check off is clips are chronological I'm going to come down to the bottom section where it says open I'm going to click on sync and we're just going to let this go and it's going to analyze the audio tracks from each of the 96 or 100 clips that we have and then it's going to use that audio waveform that it's generated in its mind in its software and it's going to use that to match up the waveforms from the other cameras and then sync up and move those video clips to those to those markers I'm going to pause the video right now um, because this takes a little bit of time now the first time you run this it this the first time I ran this it took 15 minutes what it does the first time you render out um, your timeline in, in pluralize it actually goes through and creates separate wave files for each camera segment so if you have a hundred clips you're gonna have a hundred different wave files and it puts them nicely into folders 
but it uses those WAV files to automatically sync up your uh, video clips. Now also, if you're using AVCHD footage, which I am in this case, uh, since AVCHD doesn't um, convert well to WAV, and the, and the software can't convert that audio directly to WAV, it'll automatically open up Adobe Media Encoder, and it'll allow Adobe Media Encoder to go through and encode just the audio portion of those clips into a WAV file. Then it'll take automatically all those WAV files, compare them, and do your sync. So the first time you run this, um, I, I timed it out. It took a little over 15 minutes, about 15 minutes and 9 seconds. Um, the second time you run this, it'll probably take closer to 5 or 6 minutes. Uh, so it's a lot quicker. And if you have to rerun it for some reason, it tends to be a lot quicker. So if your sync doesn't come out perfectly the first time, you won't have to wait the whole 15 minutes the second time because you've already created all those temporary WAV files that, it, that it'll use to sync up your, your audio tracks. So I'm going to pause the video recording right now and we are going to uh, come back as soon as it's uh, close to being done rendering. Okay, now that our sync is done, we can bring this uh, file back into Premiere Pro. If you're not sure where it saved the synced file, you can actually look right here. It tells you that it outputted it right into my January 2011 folder, and it's called Video Review 1, but now with an extension of underscored synced XML at the end of it. Okay, so now we're going to load the file, the synced file, back into Premiere Pro CS5. And to do this, we're going to go back to the project panel, and we're going to take a blank space. We're going to right click. We're going to select import, and we're going to come to the new synced file. So I exported the XML file as video review one. I'm going to import it as video review one synced, and it'll be in the exact same folder that you saved your video your your original XML file. In this case, video review one. I select open. Now when it opens it up, it's going to create a new folder, and inside this folder will be a new sequence and also another set of your images. It doesn't duplicate the images on your hard drive, but it does duplicate the uh, the synced thumbnails and I'm not, or the synced files, and I'm not sure why it does that. Uh, it's easy enough to delete the originals so you don't have duplication in here, which uh, if you have a big enough edit, it could make a mess of your um, of your project panel. But in this case, it puts it into subfolders, so it's not a really big deal. You can close the subfolder down and, and get rid of a lot of that mess. But what interests me here is the, the new synced sequence. So I'm going to double click on this, and this will open up the new synced sequence in the timeline. And I'm going to zoom out a little bit here. And as you can see, it's done a really good job of syncing up most of the audio clips. So this top row here is my AVCHD files. This uh, second row down in the video or video track one are all the little DSLR clips. And if I zoom in, I can see that it's probably missed uh, maybe eight or nine of these out of maybe 80 or 90. It missed one at the beginning that it didn't sync up. It uh, looks like it might have missed one here. Just to, oh, I zoomed in a little bit too much there. Let's scroll over. It missed, uh, it looks like three here. And it missed uh, one, two, three, four, five there. So that's it. So we've, we've got five and then that that little one somewhere in between that I'm trying to find. Uh, sometimes the best way to find it is to move your uh, your timeline indicator over to the point that you're looking. So in this case, right about here. Then use the plus key on your keyboard and zoom right into that point. So it missed one clip here. But you know, aside from that, it's a lot easier to go and manually sync up eight or nine clips, or just decide not to use them because you've got the A roll anyway. Um, I would probably go through and sync them up, or at least look at the clips to see what whether the angle is worth syncing up, and then just go through and manually sync it based on the file number. Uh, let's say it's 47 or 48, or in this case I'll zoom in here. This is number 65, so I know it has to fall in between clips number 64 and 66, so it shouldn't be that hard to sync up. Um, now let's say you want to go through, now you've got two cameras, and you want to go through now and decide which which of these tracks am I going to show during the edit process. So what you would do in this case is you're going to highlight all these tracks and I use control A on the keyboard that highlights them all. Then I can, I'm going to come up over here to the clip drop down menu and I'm going to select nest and that nests them together creates one track that has both of these video tracks within it. And then I'm going to right click on the video track one that it's created or the nested track. I'm going to right click I'm going to come up to multi-camera and I'm going to enable it. Now there's one other step you've got to do. Then you come over to window and you say show me the multi-camera monitor. And this opens up a multi-camera monitor and it can handle up to four video tracks. We've only got two video tracks. 
and it's showing me both video tracks. Let me see if I can make this a little bigger. And now at this point here, Premiere Pro makes it really easy to decide which track you actually want to go through and and use as your um, as your main track. So I'm going to I'm going to start playing this. I'm going to bring this back to the beginning here of this two camera clip. Let's bring my cursor over a couple of times. Okay, there we go. Now, I, I happen to like this view right here um, from the B-roll, so I'm going to keep that selected. I'm going to hit play. And, and now I'm going to cut over to this. So now I'm cutting over to this view. Now I'm going to cut back to this view. And what I've just done in that window is I've created the edits on the timeline. So just by viewing and clicking on which camera angle I want to um, include in my final product, in my final edit, all I do is I click in those windows. And every time I click in those windows, it actually goes through and it creates the edit for me. But you can also uh, control that. So if, if you didn't like where you cut out of that scene, I can actually just shorten this up and I can elongate this particular clip and now my edit point is going to be at a, at a different section than where I chose. So a lot of times when you're playing back real time live it's hard to make a precise decision as the edit point since you don't know what's coming up in the next second or two. So make your edit points based on what you think is going to work and then you can go back and tweak them afterwards. So that is how you use Singular Pluralize in Adobe Premiere Pro CS5. Um, it works very, very well for multiple camera shoots as long as you don't have a ton of shots. I find when you have a, um, a lot of different shots, a lot of different tracks, you can get it to sync, but sometimes it takes you three or four or five times uh, trying different options and pluralize to get it to sync perfectly. Um, this case here, we weren't perfect, but it was pretty close to perfect. We had, you know, nine tracks, and it was basically 90% perfect, which means it saves you 90% of syncing. This would not be an easy one to sync up. You'd have to go through, and as you can see, even though all these DSLR clips are in, you know, order, timeline, one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to 99, let's say. Um, they're not necessarily right next to each other, so it just means you'd have to sit there and listen for a an audio cue or visual cue that you could use. Then bringing the next clip over and trying to find that same visual clue and then matching those up. To have to do that for 100 clips would take you 3-4 hours. Um, even if we're generous and say 2 hours. This here takes 15-20 to 20 minutes. It takes you maybe another 15-10 minutes, 15 minutes to sync up those other 9 clips if you wanted to. And you're easily saving at least half the time that it would take to do it manually, probably more. I, mean, I think I'm being a little bit too generous on how long it takes to um, to do it by hand. So that is Pluralize for Adobe Premiere Pro CS5. This is Ron Risman at CameraTown.com. Thank you very much for watching.